Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please ensure to like, share, and subscribe. And also click the bell notification in the top right hand corner to be made aware anytime I upload tutorials or videos to YouTube. Alright, let's craft together. Hey guys, so if you have been following me for the last week or so, um, I've been doing video tutorials since I received my Cameo 4. And so I've been doing um, just some small chunks of video tutorials to help um, inspire or encourage you guys that have your Cameo 4s still in the box to take them out and let's start your Cameo journey. So as you know, if you've been following me for longer than that time frame, um, I'm a Cricut girl. So I bought my Cricut Maker about nine years ago, and that's what I've been using. And I later determined that I wanted to kind of broaden my horizon. So I decided to purchase the Cameo 4. So I've completed a video tutorial on my unboxing. You can check that video tutorial out. Not really a tutorial, but just showing you what all came in the bundle. And then I did a tutorial on just the machine itself. Um, showing you all the different aspects of the Cameo 4 because I, I really think before you start designing you really need to get to know your machine first okay and so today I'm going to take you inside the Silhouette Studio um, I have the basic edition I will get the business edition because I know that you have to uh, if you want to be able to do rhinestones and I want to be able to do everything that I can with this machine like I do with my Cricut Maker so um I will be upgrading um, to the business. But before I do that, I want to um, show those that are just opening those boxes and starting to use the Cameo 4, what they can do in the basic edition. And then they can later determine if they also want to upgrade to the business edition. All right. So we're going to be cutting vinyl today. All right. So. Don't be afraid, guys. Watch that video tutorial on just starting your machine. And then once you um, do that, you'll be ready to start, you know, cutting some things. All right. So we're going to cut here today. And I'm going to take you inside the Silhouette Studio. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, here we are inside Silhouette Studio. I have version 4.5. And when you first get logged into your software, you're going to notice that you have all these different areas on the left, the right, the top, and it may seem a little bit confusing, especially if you're coming from Cricut Design Space, okay? But no worries, okay? I'm gonna help you to understand as much as we can in each one of these chunks of um, video tutorials. So today I'm going to talk about just doing a simple cut, okay? Just a simple cut. So right now, um, the first thing I want to show you to help you out is up in your menu area, you have your file, edit, view, panels, object, and a help. Under help, there is a user's manual. If you click on that, this has 118 pages of information to help you with learning how to use Silhouette Studio. And the great thing here is you have your, <clears throat> you have your table of contents here. It tells you everything that is in here. If you need help with drawing and editing images, you know, you can find that very easy. Um, if you also need help with saving a file or print and cut, all of that information is here to help you out, all right? But the main important thing that I want you to see here is at the very bottom of this 
file is a Silhouette Studio shortcuts. So these are all the shortcuts that will help you out. So when you're in Silhouette Studio and let's say, you know, you need to um, edit a point, you will hit A on your keyboard. Okay. And that's, it gives you the shortcuts for a PC or a Mac. Okay. If you need to bring something forward, you're going to hit the control plus, you know, this little character here and so on and so forth. So I just wanted to point that out to you that you do have this help menu or not help menu, but this help file inside of the Silhouette Studio. Okay. So I'm going to exit out of that. And I am right back at the design portion of Silhouette Studio. Now, four things I'm going to, or four tabs I'm going to point out here on the right side. You have a design tab. This is where you come. You have your mat, and this is where you're going to do all of your designing. You also have the store, Silhouette Store, where you can go and you can make purchases. So let's get that to come up here. And I may have it up. That's why it's doing that. Let's take a look. Okay, we'll come back to it. And then we have the library. Now, when I purchased my bundle on Amazon, I actually got 100 free images. Um, and so here's my 100 images. So if I click on this file, there's the 100 images that I got with my bundle. Okay. So that helps with getting started. Okay. Probably not a lot out here I would use, to be honest with you, but they're here. Okay. And then you have the send. Now the send is once you've completed designing, then you're going to come to this tab to get ready to, you know, tell your machine what type of material you're cutting, you know, how many passes you want to do, so on and so forth. OK, so we'll talk about that here in just a moment. But we're going to come back over to the design. Let me see why this is not coming up. <sighs> All right, maybe it doesn't want to play with us today. All right, so I'm going to keep going. Um, stranger things have happened. So when you're in the design today, I'm going to show you how to do just a basic cut. OK, so let's say that you want to um, just put a name on a T-shirt. OK, so you can come over here on the left hand side and this A is your text. OK, when you click on that A, it's not going to do anything, okay? You have to actually take your cursor and click on, you know, the um, the screen in order for it to work, okay? So I'm just going to type in Ken Doris. Nothing's changed here. I love using my own name. All right, so I type in Ken Doris. Now, you have some options here. You can change your text. Right now it's on Arial, but you can come up here and click on this drop down, and you can change that to whatever font you so choose that is already here that you want to play around with. Okay, so you can, you know, lot to choose from out here. Let's see what this one looks like. Okay, I can dig it. All right, so we have this on the attraction personal use. I'm pretty sure I've downloaded this at some point in time, but who knows. Now, right now, when you click on your text, it's going to tell you what size it is. So this is currently at a 2.495 by 10.431. And if you want to make it larger or smaller, you're just going to click on one of these little rectangles. I like to use the bottom right and just drag it in, okay? Just hold it and drag it in. So right now we just changed it to a 1.496 by 6.255. So that's the size of our um, text here. All right, we're gonna keep it really, really basic, all right? So 
Now that we've done that, we want to add some color to it. So you're going to come over to the right hand side of your screen and this little painters um, icon, we're going to click on that. And this is your feel. Okay, so you want to make sure you have your um, text selected before you choose and you can pick whatever color you want to make it. Don't fret about the red outline because that is the um, cut lines. That's where the silhouette cameo for is going to cut. Okay, so you want to make sure that red outline is there. So if I do it in black, you see you still have your red um, outline. All right. So we're going to say it doesn't really matter what color, like I used to say with the Cricut uh, design space, it doesn't matter what color you select here. It only matters what color vinyl you put in your machine. Okay, so this is really not going to determine what color it's going to be. But for designing purposes, you may want to use a true color. Okay. So now we have a feel here. Now, before we actually go to cut this out, you know, when you're using heat transfer vinyl, you have to mirror your image. So in order to mirror, mirror your image, you want to make sure that you have selected the image first, and then you're going to come up and you're going to select object, mirror, and you want to flip it horizontally. Okay. So now you have mirrored your image, okay? Now you want to make sure that we're using a 12 by 12, or I say I have this on a 12 by 12 mat. That's what I selected. But you want to make sure I have um, my paper size or my vinyl size as 8.5 by 11. So that's the size of this white paper. And it's letting you know here that this red line, if you go outside of that red line with your design, so if my design was hanging like this, it's going to only cut this. It's not going to cut that out. Okay, so we're going to bring that back over here. And I like to keep it as close to the top left edge, kind of like Cricut Design Space as possible. All right. So basically, if that was all that you wanted to do, you would be good to get ready to go ahead and um, cut this vinyl out. So in order to cut the vinyl, you're going to go to Send. Okay, so you can see exactly what's going to be cut here. You have the word Candoris. It is filled in and it has the little red, you know, um, outline around it. Okay, now <clears throat> looking over at the right hand side of my screen, um, I've been using this. I used this uh, vinyl earlier today, this vinyl glossy, but you can tell the, um, you can tell here what type of um, material you're using. So if you click on this drop down arrow, you can select whatever it is that you're actually cutting. Okay. So this is how you select. Okay. Don't try to scroll down like this because sometimes it'll go faster than you want it to. I find that just using the right side and using the scroll works better. And then once you get there, you can just click on it. Okay. So I have mine set on vinyl glossy and I have it set on an auto cut. Now, if you want it to change the type of cut that it's going to be doing, this is where you would do that. Okay. So we're going to leave it on an automatic cut here. And we have the auto blade, which is in my carriage one. So you want to make sure with your blade guys that your blade locks into carriage one. And you want to make sure that there's no space in between the blade and the little carriage part. You want to make sure that you hear it click when you put it into carriage number one. Okay, because that's what we're going to be using here today is carriage number one. And it's showing you here that, um, like I said, this is where your cuts are going to be. And anything um, outside of this area will not cut. Okay, anything outside of this area is not going to cut. So then you have, once you select the material that you're using, and we have carriage one here, you have your blade depth. So right now it's at a one. If you attempt to cut some vinyl and 
based on these settings, it doesn't work for you. You can actually change the setting. So you can see, I just moved mine up to a three and you can also change the force. I'm gonna move this up to a 15. Okay, I'm gonna do two passes and I'm going to leave the speed at five. I think that's fine, all right? So if I were you and it's the first time, I would say just type in your name like you saw me do. Follow this process just like you saw me do. And so you can just get a feel for um, cutting your vinyl, okay? Just get a feel for it, kind of test it out, all right? So what we're going to do is I'm now going to go ahead and load my machine because at this point, all I need to do is click on send just to do a basic cut. And that's all we're doing here. We'll talk about, you know, lines. We'll also talk about feel. We'll get to those things, but right now we're going to keep it very, very, very simple. We just want to do a basic cut just to get a feel for our machine after we have identified what all the Cameo 4 um, compartments and everything that's on the machine itself. Now we're just talking about just doing a simple cut in Silhouette Studio. All right, so going to come online uh, up on my screen here, but all I have to do at this point is click send, okay? So before I click send, I want to show you what I have going on with my machine, all right? All right, guys, here we are. We have the Cameo on and ready to go. This vinyl that I'm using, it's a... Um, kind of like a little bit of a thick vinyl. So that's why I changed my um, settings on the Cameo. So the first thing we're going to do is always check your blade. You wanna make sure that your blade is snug in place and you wanna make sure that this is pushed all the way back, guys. So you wanna make sure that when you put your blade in that you lock it. You wanna make sure that you hear it lock. Okay, you want to make, well, not lock, but here it clicks. <laughs> okay, you don't want any space in between the blade and the little front part of carriage one. You don't want any space. If you have any space, guys, you're going to have issues. Okay, so you don't want any space. I think I'm going to change it and use that vinyl instead. But I think my settings will still be fine. We'll find out here in just a second. I think that's the most challenging part of using the Cameo 4 it's just getting the proper settings for your vinyl. So I'm gonna use this one because it's already on a roll. So you're gonna open up this bottom part here and I'm going to use the um, no mat cut. So we're gonna go ahead and I like to start my roll by putting it inside the little slit here. We're gonna pull these both up and you wanna make sure that um, you are using a vinyl roll, guys. If you have a piece of vinyl and it's not a complete roll, um, this can act kinda of wonky and not really wanna cut for you. I would highly recommend you use a mat in that case. But as long as you're using the roll, you're fine with this version, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to take now our vinyl and you want to make sure you have two little arrows that are pointing to the right and a line in front of it here on the left hand side you want to make sure that you line up your vinyl you want to make sure that you line up that vinyl right in front of that line okay and you want to make sure that you have both of your rollers to meet. So you have the left roller that's going to be right there at that gray line, okay? And then you have the right roller that's gonna be right at that 12 inch mark, okay? Right at the 12 inch mark. And this right here locks your roller into place, this lever here on the right. So you wanna make sure that that's pushed backwards. If it's forward, then you're gonna have problems where your vinyl is not going to just um, roll in naturally like it should. So you wanna make sure that's pushed back, make sure that your right roller is locked into place, okay? 
Now at this point, we got that lined up. Everything looks good. We're gonna go ahead and hit this up arrow. We're gonna hit the up arrow one time and it's going to pull your vinyl in. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to Silhouette Studio here and I'm gonna click on Send. All right, so. We're gonna let it cut here. Now that's the one thing about this machine, it's really loud. I guess over time I'll get used to it, but it's really loud. And you can see the status. Um, it's a countdown on my screen. You can't see it here, but if you're looking at your Silhouette Studio screen, you'll see that there's a countdown letting you know how much more time this has to go before it's done. Right now it's on 23 seconds. put it on two passes. <coughs> All right, once it's done cutting guys, what I highly recommend is that you use your um, cutter in the back of your machine instead of rolling it out. So what you're going to do is you wanna make sure that your, your machine is open in the back you have a little, you have two little levers that you can push down. So I'm going to push those down. And once the machine is open, you're going to use the arrow that's closest to you in the front. That will roll the vinyl backwards. So I'm going to leave my hand on that. And I'm going to see where my image is. I pushed it out by accident, guys. I'm going to roll it back in just so I can show you guys. I think I got excited. All right. So I'm just going to put this back in just so you can see how it works. All right. So now I am going to put it on back in. And then you have a little cutter that you can slide from the left to the right. I'm going to slide that cutter across. But you're going to drop your, you're going to close your um, cutter. You're going to close it back up so that it puts a tight grip on your vinyl. And then you're going to put that back down. You're going to slide the cutter across there we go all right so there is my vinyl cut and then you want to make sure that you open this back up you're going to roll your cutter back over to the left side and then reopen the back side all right so here we have our cut. 
you can see that it cut perfectly so I'm gonna go ahead and weed this out just to show you that we got a nice cut and try not to poke myself here Now, trust and believe, guys, when I did my first cut on this thing, it was a hot mess. <laughs> it was a hot mess as I was trying to teach myself. And I chopped up so much vinyl in the beginning. And I wanted to make sure that I don't have you wasting your product. Because vinyl costs money, right? So I wanted to make sure that I got all the do's and don'ts down before I did the very first cut with you guys. Tell you some of the things that I learned from doing my cut so that you don't make those mistakes. All right, so all I'm doing is just weeding here and we're almost done all right almost there and you guys um it is going in the right direction your my uh my camera is inverted so it looks like it's backwards but it's not so I do want to put that out there. And then guys, if you wanted to, um, so like my vinyl needs to, I need to kind of shoot this over a little bit. I'm going to let this up or let this down. And then I'm going to move my vinyl over a little bit. Let's see if I can get it to do yeah, I can't do it that way. It's moving this instead. That moves the vinyl. This moves the carriage. I forgot about that. So I'm going to take it out. But had I not removed this, guys, your vinyl would still be in your machine. And you would be able to go ahead and do your next cut with no problem without moving the vinyl. And you can see where I've used this vinyl and I cut a little slit right there. I would just take that into consideration and make something really small and then I would still have my full roll. But um, yeah, a couple of uh, reminder tips that I will tell you guys. Most importantly, you want to make sure that that blade is locked into place. If it is not locked into place, your vinyl is going to slide all over the place, okay? and you're gonna have a mess on your hands. So first and foremost, make sure that is locked into place. Make sure if you're going to be using the, um, if you're going to be using the matless, you wanna make sure that I highly recommend that you're working with a roll, okay? Um, and not just a, a piece of vinyl, okay? In order for it to work properly. And get in the habit of playing around with those vinyl settings guys the reason i recommend that is because when i put what type of vinyl this was i didn't get a good cut okay it did not cut for me and i thought my vinyl was old and all kinds of stuff so i had to put it on my cricket and let my cricket cut it and i'm like okay it's not the vinyl so it's clearly me so I had to go back in and play with the settings. So the settings that I used on this um, vinyl, I had it at a depth, a depth, a blade depth of three, force of 15. I did two passes and a speed of five, okay? So if that will help you guys out. And you can see how it cut perfectly and I'm able to do my weeding with no problemos. And that's what you want. I've heard people say that, you know, they tried to cut and it ate up their mat and all kinds of stuff. It's because you got to get, you got to get that cut right. And when you find the right settings for your different types of material or fabric or, you know, vinyl, whatever you're cutting, you'll, you'll be good to go. Cause that's the biggest thing. So my next video tutorial, guys, I'm going to talk about 
uh, I'll probably do one more vinyl cut with an image. So there we have Candorus perfectly. And I'll be able to put this on a shirt. I see that. And again, my, like I said, my camera is inverted. But for those of you, it is cut right. I would lay this down on the shirt like this and then it would print or it will iron it on perfectly. All right, so that is how you do just a basic cut. All right, I I don't say this in the beginning, guys. I'm gonna start saying it in the beginning, but start watching videos completely the first time. Watch it completely the first time and then go back and do it, okay? If you wanna try it. Um, that's because some things may not be told to you up front or you know you may miss something you know if you're trying to do it at the same time I'm trying to do it so I highly recommend that you you know get you some alone time if you're trying to learn get you some alone time and watch the entire video first and then go in and attempt to do it so in the training environment and learning and um environment we like to say tell show do we tell you how to do it we show you how to do it and then we have you to do it and that is what i would highly recommend okay watch it that's us telling you we're gonna show you how to do it that's a part of the tale and then you go back in and then you do it and that is the way you can learn without making you know little silly mistakes Okay, that's what I call them, little silly mistakes, all right? But there you go, all right? So that's how you can do a basic cut using the Cameo 4. Um, and then once you're done, you just hit that um, down arrow. And then you got your roll ready to go. Close everything up. And you're ready for the next go round or the next project, okay? So I hope, guys, if you still have that Cameo 4 in the box, that you'll take it out and you'll attempt to walk through some of the things that I'm showing you here to kind of help you out to get on your Cameo journey. Like you can see, I'm new to the Cameo. I just bought my Cameo 4, um, but I want to encourage you to get yours out like I did some of the Cricut crafters uh, when I first started my Facebook group. I had a lot of people that still had those crickets in the machine and uh, in the box um, and they were afraid to use them. So that was my purposes and my purpose in purchasing the Cameo 4 is so that I one could learn it myself and two, I could encourage others to take it out of the box and get started. OK, if you are not new to the Cameo 4, still follow my journey. You may be able to share in the comments with me things that I could encourage people to do better or do a different way, because that's another thing you're going to find, guys. There are so many different ways you can do things. Somebody else may have shown a different way to do this cut than I did. The, the biggest thing is that the outcome is the same. OK, as long as the outcome is the same, we're good to go. All right. All right, guys. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Let me come up here so you can see my big face. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> if you're currently um, following me in my Facebook group, Ken Doris's Cricket and Creative Crafters, I want to thank you guys so much for following me via Facebook. If you would like to join my Facebook group, it's Ken Doris's Cricket and Creative Crafters. It will be linked in the description of this video tutorial. All you have to do is click on the link, agree to the Facebook group rules, and we'll get you in. It's just that simple. All right. And my Facebook group is all about learning. I'm all about teaching, 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 teaching. You can ask me anything, okay? Um, now, if I don't know the answer, I may pass you on to someone else that may know that particular craft, but it's about learning, okay? Um, and then if you are currently subscribed to my YouTube channel, I wanna thank you guys so much for the support that you show via YouTube. My eyes itching here. Um, show via YouTube. Um, if you're seeing me for the first time and you like my method of teaching, then please like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you guys, my motto is each one reach one so that each one can teach one. And you guys have an amazing weekend. Bye.